Okie dokie. All right, so let's talk about human space flight. Um, so, um, does anyone know the name yeah. of the first human being to go into space? <laughs> Oliver, the fact that you're answering that with an answer that you know is not correct is very <laughs> strong, strong, strongly um, angering for me. All right, so Yuri Andresevich Gagarin. Yuri Gagarin. Yuri Andresevich Gagarin. That's good. Yuri Andresevich Gagarin. All right. Vostok 1. Vostok 1. So this is what rocket again? This is the R7. The R7, yeah? Why is it on a ramp? What? Why is it on a ramp? So this is this is called the the transporter erector. Okay. Okay. So the transporter erector transports and erects the rocket. See how that works? Yeah. So this is actually this is not a ramp. This is actually in the middle of it being raised up to vertical. Okay. All right. So. Um, new. No. Well, yeah, I mean, the, they'll do what are called sounding rockets that are like just high speed solid rocket that don't have anything on them. And they'll launch them diagonally. But that's the, we usually don't like get to orbit by doing that. Okay, so. Vehicle? Vehicular manslaughter. All right, so Vostok 1 was the spacecraft in which Yuri Gagarin, Yuri Gagarin, Gagarin. So this is, this is Yuri Gagarin. He looks like he looks like a handsome Okay. So one of the, uh, one of the, requirements for being the first Soviet man in space was that he needed to have a broad smile. Really? Yep, he needed to have a nice smile. That's, what, that's one thing that they really wanted. So he was a test pilot, right? Yeah. Test pilot. The thing is, is that the Vostok capsule was not piloted. It was completely autonomous. It did everything controlled by a computer. So he didn't actually do any flying. So he just chilled? He just sat there? He just sat there. That's scary. The same way that the Sputnik 2 capsule was not piloted by a, dog. by a dog, right? He didn't pilot this. This used, the, this used very, very similar technology to what they used for Leica and Belka and Strelka. So oh, you're telling me that the U.S. used a pilot? So the United States used a semi-piloted. So we'll talk. We'll, we'll talk about it in 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 contrast. Okay. So this is Yuri Gagarin. I would recommend knowing this name. This is just an important name to know because this was when a human being first left the 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 sphere of our, of our planet um, out to the, uh, beyond the, the atmosphere. I thought it was crazy to see that. Yeah, he, uh, he talked was about, there a window or did he, just... he did. There, there is a small window in the Vostok capsule. Did he have a camera? He did not have a camera with him. Oh, <laughs> So this is a replica of what the Vostok capsule looks like. That's what you mean. Yep. That's scary. Yeah. Right. yeah the, the Soviets, in this, in this era, it was very, like, doesn't that look very, like, retro-futuristic? -fu it's, yeah. like, something that you would see coming out of the 60s to go to space, right? <laughs> 
What's up with the what? What? These? Yeah. These are fuel tanks. Fuel tanks. So if you were to get so, if if I was to, um, you know the so the the size of the mouse hand there is actually pretty close to the actual size of a hand, actually, which is pretty oh, interesting. Really? Oh, so that's, you would have to frame. Yeah, yeah. It was. It's small. It was small. Okay. You, 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 you'd have to be. What's though this? That's where the head, bro. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, so it was it was a little bit bigger. Like, I would say that the hand of my mouse here would be like the size of a child's hand. Yeah, pretty similar to Emma's. <laughs> what? So I don't, this is not the door. This isn't the hatch. I believe the hatch is on the other side. Um, yeah, here, that's the hatch. Um, there we go. So that's, they, they replaced the hatch with a glass, <coughs> glass hatch. So you can kind of see in there a little bit. Let's make this a little bit bigger here. So you can see in here a little bit. <laughs> so that gives a kind of a sense of scale. It was it was small. Okay, it was pretty it was pretty small. Not very large at all. All right. But this is the Vostok mission, the Vostok one. Okay. Yuri Gagarin was the first person to go into space. He completed one or two orbits. Let me, let's think here. Um, yeah, just one orbit. But he did, he did go into orbit, okay? So he went all the way around the, the Earth. He landed in like some fields <laughs> in, uh, in the middle of the Soviet Union. And so this was, this was top secret. So the Soviet people did not know that this was happening when it happened. And so some people saw his capsule coming down. And what's interesting actually, as, as he was coming down, he, um, uh, the plan was to actually have the pilots eject out of the capsule before it hit the ground because they didn't know for sure if they'd be able to survive the impact of the capsule hitting the ground. So it had a parachute, but they weren't like super, super confident that it would be okay. So he had a parachute and he jumped out and actually parachuted down separate from the capsule. Um, but uh, he landed in this field and a mother and daughter that were working in the field saw him and he was, so he was wearing his orange spacesuit with the, like, he, they have this big helmet. Um, yeah, yeah, it, like a, a comically large helmet. Um, so it's kind of a, like a large helmet. They thought he was like an alien. Because they saw this, this like metallic burnt spear falling out of the, uh, under a parachute. And then this orange guy with all like these like tubes and help. Anyway. So he, he had to, he pulled his visor back. He was like, no, I'm, just, I'm, I'm a Soviet like you. I'm a, you know, I'm a comrade, right? I wonder what they said about that. So. Have you actually placed two farmers under arrest? Sam? <laughs> Get him. So th there you go. That's that's the size comparison there. Okay. So there you go. Yuri Gagarin. All right. Does anyone know the name of the first American in space? Probably Neil. No. It is not Neil Armstrong. 
It was not Buzz Aldrin either. Buzz Lightyear. Alan Shepard. Okay. So this, the United States was in a race to get the first person into space, right? With the Soviet Union. April of 1961, Yuri Gagarin went into space on Vostok 1. Oh, on Vostok 1 as well? So, Yuri Gagarin, no, no, no. Yuri Gagarin went in April of 61. Um, Mercury. Mercury retrograde. God, get out of here. Freaking astrology. Get out of here, dude. So the Mercury program the first flight of the Mercury program was the Mercury Redstone launch vehicle. They used the Redstone rocket. Okay. Um this was the launch of Alan Shepard. Okay. This occurred, let's see here, does it not have the date? No. It was, I believe, in July. See, uh, it said March. Look at that So this is actually not Ham. This is Enos. Enos. Um, he went into orbit. Okay. So Alan Shepard. So his his flight was um, Mercury. Oh man, they gave them weird names. Freedom Seven. That's what it's called. Freedom Seven. So Mercury. It's the, the actual name of the mission was Mercury Redstone 3. It's, I don't know why they gave him such ridiculous names, but the name of his capsule was the Freedom 7, the Mercury capsule. Okay, and he did this flight in uh, uh, Shepard. Alan Shepard. January, no, no, 61, no, 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 May, yeah, May of 1961. So the Soviets put Gagarin in space in April. The, 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 the Americans put Shepard into space in May. But Shepard didn't do any orbits. It was suborbital. He went straight up and came straight back down. Yeah, I did yeah, so these, these uh, the Mercury suits were the silver color. Um, they, they were flame retardant, right? Kind of like space, kind of like race, race suits. Um, yeah, okay. So that's Alan Shepard, okay. He, uh, again, was the first US person in space and the second person overall to go into space, okay. That was, this is the Mercury program, all right? So the Mercury Redstone, Mercury Redstone. Again, this is the Redstone rocket. Very underpowered. And it did not have, it did not have the ability to get into orbit, right? So Ham, Really Enos? Yeah. Enos went into orbit using a different launch vehicle, and we're going to talk about that launch vehicle. It's the um, the Gemini Atlas. Was Enos before Shepard? No, after. So Shepard is in May in '61. Enos was in Enos the chimpanzee was in November of '61. Um, no, because you're Gagarin went into orbit in April of 61. So he did he did a full orbit. Man, America was really 
behind. Yeah, the United States was behind in the, in the space race, okay? So this is the Mercury Redstone. This is the Mercury capsule. If you thought that the Vostok ca capsule is small. Russia couldn't make the orbit if we hadn't even said the space. Yeah, that's true. The Mercury capsule is, is very, very tight. Um, let's see here. Yeah, even smaller than the Vostok. Oh my gosh, that's horrible. Yeah. So they could barely fit a person in this thing. The hatch looks like this. So that's a person for scale. And that's, that person's pretty far back there. And they, yeah, so they just slide in and yeah, bolts. And they literally, the, the hatch, the hatch was literally like screwed on. They didn't have, the door didn't have a hinge. They would just put the hatch on and then bolt it down. <laughs> oh yeah, we were, we, were, we were rushing everything to try and beat the Soviets. And then we moved the first window. There was a tiny window, but unfortunately on Shepard's flight, his window got covered in ice. He could hardly see. <laughs> so the Soviet technically did get the space for how did he not have a window wiper? How did he not have a window wiper? Okay. It was, yeah, it, it was essentially, yeah, so this was, the, here's the window. <laughs> it's like, best out of five. No, best out of seven. Yeah. Best out of 21. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. So the United States was, was pretty far behind, okay? So the Mercury Redstone was a very small rocket in comparison to the R7, and it was underpowered. It could barely get the Mercury capsule into space, much less into orbit, okay? The R7 that the Soviets were using was far superior, all right? But the United States would try and catch up with, with the Gemini program. And I'm not going to teach you too much about the Gemini program today because we're going to do a research project that you're going to be working on and turning in this week. Um, and, but we need to talk, before we talk about the... Uh, the Gemini program, we need to talk about the first female human in space. Her name is Valentina Tereshkova. Like the Kerbal. Like the Kerbal. This is Valentina Tereshkova. She, she is still alive. She's a total badass. Um, she was the first woman in space. She she went on the R seven as as well in in the in the Vostok capsule. Yes, she's highly decorated. Okay, Valentina Tereshkova. So she was she was in the Vostok capsule. Her mission was the was Vostok. I'm trying to remember the name. Vostok six. Okay. So her mission was Vostok 6. What does Vostok mean? Vostok, um, I forget. Um, she comes in 48 orbits. Yeah, 48 orbits. Wait, 48 orbits? Yeah. How long was she up? Two days, Two days, 22 hours, 50 minutes. Thanks, Emma. So Vostok means let's see here. She was how many Um I I don't think that she I think she was like something like the tenth human in space. Remember a state former cosmonaut. She orbited the Earth 48 times, three days in space. I forget. 
what? Cameron? Sure. I think that she was like this, the ninth or tenth human in space. So she is 83 now. Oh my. I got no she was only 24 when she went to space. Okay. How many orbits did she do? She did 48? Uh, yeah. 48. She has this like gray streak that she, she just, she looks like she would rip your head off. Doesn't she? Like, don't mess with this lady. <laughs> she, she will kill you. Um, anyway, Valentina Tereshkova, first woman in space. Okay. Well, this, were they um, American or Russian? So, Valentina, she's Soviet. She's Russian. So, she, she, she went to space in 1963, two years after, um, two years after. Gagarin and Shepard. Does anyone know how long it took for the United States to send a woman to space? <laughs> no. Um, it took the United States more than 25 years to send a woman to space. We so hard. Yep. No, she was not. Sally Ride. Sally Ride. She is. Um, but she is the first member of the LGBTQ community to go into space. She, she was, she hadn't come out when she went to space because the 80s were not a great time to be, you know, um, gay. But, um, but yeah, so Sally Ride, she's really cool. Um, huge inspiration, first American woman in space, but it took a long time. The Soviets also put the first person of color in space. Um, it was a. <laughs> not gonna lie, starting to root for the Soviets. Yeah. We're gonna at the end of this class. I'm finally gonna get to like where the Americans. Like boo, boo, middle-aged white guys, boo. <laughs> <laughs> yes, comrade. All right, so, but Valentina Tereshkova, first woman in space on Vostok 6, okay? So, up until this point, um, all of these flights had been single people, right? Including the first American to orbit the Earth, John Glenn. Oh, that's a nice name. Okay. He became a senator. Oh, he is a problem. <laughs> he became a senator. He is also, he holds, he holds the record. He died, unfortunately, in, uh, when did he die? No, that was when he was in office. 2016 is when he died. He, uh, um, he holds the record for the oldest person to go into space up until now, because he went, so he was on the, on the Mercury program, but he also went on the space shuttle, um, STS-95. So we'll talk about that later, but there he is in space at the age of... Was this after he was a senator too? Yeah, no, it was actually dur during his time as senator. Really? Yeah. So he, yeah, John Glenn was the first human, the first American to orbit the Earth. Okay, that was in 1962. He orbited three times. Okay, and he was, um, yeah. So first. Human into space, Yuri Gagarin. First American in space, Alan Shepard. First woman in space, Valentina Tereshkova. First American to orbit, John Glenn. Okay? So, 
So he was in the Mercury capsule as well. But it, this was not the Mercury on the Redstone. This was the Mercury on the Atlas. The, the Atlas rocket was significantly more powerful than the Redstone. Yeah, it was made out of stainless steel, just like Starship. It is clean. Okay, really cool. Um, this was the first American rocket that was capable of significant payloads into orbit. Remember that the Jupiter C was the orbital launch vehicle for the Explorer 1, which was an upgraded version of the V2. I know that this is a lot of names, but there was V2 and then Jupiter C and then Redstone and then Atlas. The Soviets were just like, let's skip those steps and make a fully orbit capable, capable rocket first. And they, so their, their rocket, the R7, was capable of orbit um, just off the bat. Sorry. Which guy? Uh, the guy, that, the guy? John Glenn. Okay, yeah, John Glenn. First American to orbit. Yeah, Phil? The R7 Yeah, it was it was more expensive to make, but its power was way like was way above what the United States could do at the time. Okay? So that's the Mercury Atlas. I, I think the Atlas is a really cool rocket. So here's a size comparison. This is the, this is the so this is the Mercury capsule, and this is what's called the abort tower. The abort tower has the ability to pull the capsule away in case the rocket's going to explode. It has a it has a, this right here. This thing on the top is a solid rocket motor. So it, can just go from zero to it can go from zero to very fast, very fast. <laughs> okay, um, and that's the whole point of it. Um, if if they ever had to use this for a, to to abort a mission, the uh, the the astronaut would have been alive, but they wouldn't have been happy about it. Um, more than likely, would have broken their teeth. Um, and they would have passed out immediately. I think that the, the acceleration on this thing was like 20 G's. <laughs> so you you would pass out very quickly and you, your jaw would probably close so fast you would break some of your teeth, but you'd be okay. It's like when roller coasters try to keep <laughs> Yeah, roller coasters try to keep <laughs> Yeah, yeah, the experience is extreme. Yeah, Philip? Zero to sixty. <laughs> um, yeah. <laughs> well, because it, and you have to remember that this is in the middle of flight, so that it's already on its way up into space. It's already going really fast, and so it's more like it's not zero to sixty. It's more like eight hundred to eight hundred and sixty. <laughs> well, the acceleration of the rocket is not very much. The acceleration of the rocket itself is like three or four Gs, but the launch escape system is like 20 Gs. Um, well, if they're not together, so this is, there is a case of co a few cosmonauts getting back to, to the Earth with broken teeth when a launch escape system was triggered. So, because their mouths were just slightly open. And paper mouths. And, yeah. <laughs> and I, I think that I've heard the audio of when that happened, and they're just screaming profanities. Just, really? <laughs> oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, Obviously, all in Russian, but pretty crazy. Anyway. <laughs> well, no, no, no. When they came to, when they came to, when they're parachuting down. So anyway, pretty fun times. Um, um, yeah, so this is the Atlas. Um, yeah, all right. Questions on the Mercury or Vostok programs?
No? Okay, this is where I'm going to end the video for today. Like and subscribe.